From an AMD perspective, it goes all the way back into you know the the 2003 time frame. Um, you know the introduction of the Direct Connect architecture, um, integrated memory controller. The architecture itself lent itself to to virtualization. We had a distinct advantage in the market at that point um, because the architecture lent itself so well to this type of workload. Uh, we also introduced and were able to take advantage of certain uh, the extensions within the in the architecture to enable live migration between multiple um, versions or revisions of AMD processors as well. So it kind of started in that era. Then as we move forward, we introduced AMD virtualization technology or what we call AMDV. And that was really the first incarnation of hardware assisted virtualization. Um, so it had to get to the hardware first. Um, and then after that, you started to see software solutions like VMware and others um, utilize those extensions within their software, simply making their software run more efficiently um, and easier to develop. Now you have um, solutions like Microsoft and, and Citrix Zen Server and Zen Open Source all relying on these hardware extensions. So they require those hardware extensions now to operate in those environments. Uh, introduction of multi-core, now quad-core, uh, the use of large pages, um, all of those things went to providing a more stable, more efficient platform to run virtualized. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, there are times when we have customers who will move an application into a virtual environment and actually get better performance than it was natively because of the ability of the, the, ability of the server now that can, can actually perform better.